Hello learners. Good day. And I welcome you once again to the song community. It is a community of learners that allow both facilitators and learners to come together to share ideas on various topics and subjects of interest. My name is Mr. Adesomi. I'll be taking you through a topic called journal today in business studies. Now, this topic is um, an introduction to journal for the junior high school students. And I would advise that you pay attention as we go along. So, journal is the topic we'll be looking at today. The question is this, what is journal? Journal is derived from a Latin word called John, which means a day. It is a word that is gotten from a Latin word called a day. So, journal is a book of original entry or a principal entry. Journal is a book of original entry or a prime entry. When we say original entry or a prime entry, we mean journal is um, an account used to record transactions. If you remember when I was uh, introducing assessment, I give you a diagram, something like this, where I told you that information or transactions, recording of transaction moves from the source document to the books of prime entry. Now, under your source document, we have your check, we have your invoice, we have your receipt, we have your uh, debit notes, we have your credit notes. All these uh, are source documents where transactions are moved from this source document to your books of prime entry or your books of uh, original entry. So under that, we have a lot of uh, accounting books. Your cash book is part of it. Your petty cash book is part of it. So information moves from this to your ledger and then from your ledger to your report. So today we'll be look, concentrating on journals. So the question is this, what is journals? What is journal? The journal is a book of original entry or prime entry, principal book of account, which records transaction in a chronological order. That is, the day-to-day -day recording of transactions arranged according to when something happened. When we talk about chronological order, we're talking about an order of events. So your journal is recorded in such a way that the dates of transaction are recorded in an orderly manner. And that's why I said is a book of original entry, which records transaction in a chronological order, in an order of how those transactions took place day-to-day -day record so your journal is all about day-to-day -day recording of transaction the process of uh, recording in your journal is called journalization the place of recording your transaction in your journal is called journalization the entry made into the book is called journal entry the entry made into this book is called journal entry. Your journal can be equally be referred to as a daily record into which transactions are entered. Your journal is a daily entry where you enter transaction as individuals, as company comes to your organization to buy the item you sell at every moment. You record them down. You record them down in an orderly manner. 
so in which these transactions are entered and classified either under the debit side or the credit side before being posted to the ledger so take note information moves from your source document to your journal which is your prime entry and from that to your ledger so that's how information moves let's look at the list of journals we have we have about six uh, I will be concentrating more on one to four for now we'll be looking at five and six later so number one is your sales journal number two your purchases journal number three return outward journal return outward journal number four return inward journal return inward journal number five cash book number five cash book number six general journal all these are the types of journal or the sales or the day books you have so they can also be called instead of journal you can replace the journal with day books you can replace the journal with day books so the first we'll be looking at is number one which is sales journal we'll be looking at sales journal so as i've said you can either call this uh, book sales journal or sales day book sales journal or sales day book it is a book of prime entry where goods and services sold on credit are recorded please look at those words in yellow color your journal only allow credit transactions why all cash transactions are recorded in your cash journal credit transactions are recorded in these other journals i've mentioned that is your sales journals your purchasing journal in there you record credit transactions remember i told you that there are two types of transactions we have the cash transactions and we have the credit transactions so for sales any item you sell on credit will enter into your credit your uh, sales journal or sales day book so your sales journal or your sales day book is a book which you record transactions on credit so it's a book where goods and services sold on credit are recorded note that your cash transactions are not recorded in the sales journal these non-cash records allows you to record the details of customers the invoice numbers the date these details are later posted to your sales ledger so information now moves from your sales journal or your sales day book to your sales ledger so any of uh, the items recorded inside your sales journal or sales day book after that uh, month will be moved into your sales journal your sales ledger now this is how your sales journal looks like it has about uh, five sub headings there we have uh, the date we have uh, particulars we have folio we have invoice number we have amount and we have total amount these are the various sub headings in your books of a uh, sales journal date particulars folio invoice number amount total amount let's look at what each of these words uh, stands for your date on your uh, journal book a uh, date of your transaction date of transaction the date where those items are either bought or sold so many transaction mean buying and selling so when you, when transaction is uh, the date where the transaction took place it will be entered inside your journal particulars there means the details of the transaction made particulars means details of 
the transaction made. The items that was uh, sold will enter and in the other case, the items that was bought will be entered. You have to list those items. You have to describe those items, the quantity of those items that was bought and their prices, their unit prices. Folio there to the number printed on the page of the books. It is used in accounting to identify an entrant, entering into a journal or a ledger. So your folio is like a number to identify when you make an entry into your journal or your ledger. Sometimes this uh, number can be in alphabet. It can be in number. So they are a form of identity to identify uh, the entry you have made into your journal or your ledger. Invoice number means the serial number printed on the invoice used to the buyer. Remember we talked about invoice when I was uh, taking you through the source document and I mentioned some of the features of your invoice. And one of the features of your invoice is that it must have um, a serial number. A serial number. So these um, number are recorded as well. Amount, the payment made to the seller to buy the goods will also be recorded. So the payment you have made will be recorded and total amount is the sum of all money sum of all money paid. So all these are some of the headings we'll be looking at. So let's look at a good example of your sales day book a good example of your sales day book and their transactions that are involved so this is a good example of the book and um, the transaction made so remember i told you that sales day book are books the way you record um, items you sold on credit so this account belongs to smith and sons June 1st, 2000, that's under the date now, June 1st, 2009. Uh, Dix, that's under particulars, bought 30 cups of rice at 100 Naira for one. So, 30 times 100. Now, not only that, 10 cups of salt at 50 Naira per one. And that will be 10 times 50. On that folio, this information will be transferred to your sales ledger. Now, on that invoice, that is an invoice number there, 002002. Now, 30 times 10 will give us 3,000. Sorry, 30 times 100 will give us 3,000. And then 10 times 50, 10 times 50 will give us 500. Adding the two together will give us 3,500. Now, June 2, we have Adamu. Adamu bought 10 pairs of sandal, 200 naira each. And that would be 10 times 200. Five flashlights at 150 naira each. That would be 5 times 150. Also, under your folio there, uh, the information will be moved to your sales ledger. And the invoice number is 003003. Now, 10 times 200 under Adamu will give you 2,000. 5 times 150 under Adamu will give you 750. When you add 2,000 plus 750 together, it will give you 2,750. Now, we are adding under our sales day book now, we are adding 3,500 plus 2,750. That will give us 6,215. This amount was sold on credit to both uh, these two customers and then we are transferring this 2,250 to our sales ledger. We are transferring it to our sales ledger. Now this is how it looks, this is how your sales day book looks like. All these items are bought or let me say are sold on, 
on credit. All these items are sold on credit. So Smith and Sons sold these items on credit. So he sold one to uh and sold another one to Adam. So DK is owing us 3,500 and then Adamu is owing us 2,750. So together we have made a credit sales. Take note of that. A credit sales of 6,250. So these items are the items which that uh, Smith and Sons sold on credits. The next we'll be looking at is our purchase journal. Our purchase journal. And uh, the definition of a purchase, your purchase day book. It is a day book in which daily credit purchases are recorded. So all items purchased by that company will be entered inside your purchase day book. Hence, cash purchases are not recorded in your purchase journal take note of that any of your day day books or any of your journals do not accept cash transactions it's only accept credit transactions all cash transactions goes into your cash uh, journal or what we call your cash book which we'll be looking at later so also your um purchase journal or your purchase day book is a non-cash purchase record that have details of all information of your customers and these informations are transferred into your purchase ledger it has the same format with your sales day book date particulars folio invoice number amount and total amount just like those journal or your sales day book now the recording is the same that one is for sales and the second one is for purchases so these are the items um smith and sons bought on credit so we can say the first one we looked at uh, uh adamo and, and and dk are debtors to this organization smith and sons why uh Femi here on this list and um, Ali are creditors to um, Smith and Sons. Why? Because these items uh, were bought on credit. So let's look at those items. Uh, August 3, 2015. Femi. So uh, Smith and Son bought 20 cups of beans at 100 naira each from Femi and to price at 50 naira each from Femi so 20 times 100 will give you 2000 there and 20 times 50 will give you 1000 not only that the same month August 5 2015 they bought some items from Ali as well on credit many Smith and Son bought these items from Ali on credit 20 pairs of shoes at 300 naira each, 5 to 150 naira each. So, when we times 20 times 300, 6, 000, 5 times 150 give us 750. So, altogether, 2000 plus 1000 will give us 3000, 6000 uh, 6, plus 750 will give us 6750. Altogether, when we add this together to give us 6000, I meaning when we add 3000 plus 6750. Plus 9,250. These items will be transferred to our purchase ledger. So these are uh, creditors. These are Sons and Smith creditors. These are the items Sons and Smith bought on credit from uh, Femi and Ali. Why? Let me go back a little. Why these items are um, those items? Son that uh, Smith and Son sold on credit, so we can say uh, DK and um, Adamu are debtors to Smith and Sons because this, those items were sold on credit to them. Why, under your purchase, Femi and Ali are 
Femi and Ali are uh, creditors. Uh, creditors. So let's move on to return inward journal. Return inward journal. So what are return inward journal? And that name for your return inward journal is your sales return book. Is your sales return book. It is a book used for recording details of goods brought back by customers due to one reason or the other. It might be reason of wrong color, wrong size, quality, or damage. So when your customers return goods back to you, you enter those items inside your sales your sales return book or your return inward book so like name imply return inward that has no return inward so when goods are returned back to you it is called return inward take note of that return inward sales return they are the same thing so when your customers that bought an item from you return those item back uh you record those item under your return inward journal or your sales return book take notes you can't go ahead and be cancelling no that's why these books they are di different books for different items now this how it looks we have your date your particulars your folio credit note number uh, your details and total so those are the headings under your return inward book so let's look at a good example august 8 bala Returned some items that we sold to to him back to us. So he returned two plastic buckets at fifteen naira each, four packs of salt at hundred naira each. So these items were returned by Bala. So when we calculate that, the first one, two times fifty will give us hundred, four times hundred will give us four hundred. So altogether, Bala returned goods worth of five hundred. So these items, we are transferring it into our trading profit and loss account. That's one of the uh, final accounts, which will be taught later. But take note, this item uh, will be transferred. This total will be transferred into our trading profit and loss account, which we'll be looking at later. So take note, your return inward journal uh, are items that are returned by your customers due to one reason or the other. It might be wrong color, the goods are damaged, and then they want to return. Now, this is where your uh, your credit note comes in, in to play. So, when uh, a customer return an item to you, immediately you you take note that that customer uh, have returned those items to you you will find out why is returning those items first now if you are accepting those items from the customer that will not tell you where you are to return those items so for if the if is for example now this is sales return so if the buyer is returning back this commodity Remember, I said the buyer will be bringing a debit note then. And then once you accept that debit note, you do you have to record this. And if it's the seller, uh, if it's uh, you that is returning it out, there's a book for that as well. So take note that your debit note comes in here because the buyer is returning it back to you. So the buyer will give you the debit note and you'll be giving the buyer a credit note um, trying to balance the, the overcharge in, in this case. So that will take us to return outward journal. Is It is the opposite of your return inward journal. So it is also called your purchase return inward. It is also called your purchase return inward remember i said your return inward journal is also called your sales return book while your return outward journal is called your purchase
turn outward. This is a day book in which details of goods sent back to the supplier are recorded. So if your customers return the goods to you, it is called return inward. If you as a seller, you are returning back that commodity to the supplier that supplied that goods to you, you will record it as return outward. Why the supplier will record it as return inward. That's how it works. Take note of that. I will say that again. If a customer returns a commodity to you as a seller, you record it as return inward. Now, if you are, rec are, are transferring that goods that your, the seller, uh, the buyer returned to you, you are taking it back to the supplier. You record that item as return outward. Why the supplier will record it as return inward? So it's a book which you, as a, a seller, you record details of goods and services or goods that you've returned back to the supplier. Remember that this record are made as soon as the goods are returned. So once you return it, you record it straight away inside your purchase return book or your return outward book. It has the same format with your return inward book, the same format. So let's look at a good example. Now this commodity you are returning back. You are returning back. So I'm also assuming that your your supplier is Bala. Bala, that's your supplier. So you are returning these goods back. Your customer that returned these goods back to you was Bala. And you also, you are returning it back to another customer and that supplier of yours, which his name is Bala. So these items are the one you are returning back. Two uh, plastic plates, two pack of sugar. So all together gives you 1,000 euros. So you are returning this back to the supplier, whether as a result of damage or reason or the other. Once you have returned it back, you record it down inside your return outward book. And then this will be transferred inside your trading profit and loss account. So, so far, take note, we've looked at uh, three separate uh, books, four now, four separate books. We looked at return. We first started with a sales day book or what we call sales journal. I told you that it is a book of your prime entry where you record goods and services you have sold on credit so when you sell goods on credit you record it inside your sales day book your purchase day book when you purchase items on credit you record inside your purchase day book your return inward if a customer returned the commodity back to you you record it inside your return inward journal which is also called your sales return book now if you are returning that commodity back to your supplier you record it inside the outward because the community is going out now. Return outward journal or your purchase return book. So I want you to try this assignment in your own one. Make more research yourself. What is journals? Give other names for journals. Listen and explain the four types of journals I have discussed. Now in my next class, we'll be looking at... Uh, some other interesting topic, how it relates to your. So, continue reading and make sure you are the best in what you are doing. Thank you.